I think kind of maybe lined up with this one, I'm going to jump out of order here, is uh, if you are kind of have misaligned views with your coach. So, so if your coach expects you to do X, but dad says, well, you should be doing this though. So like your, your philosophy and your coach's philosophy don't line up, you know, or, or maybe to dumb it down even more is if your coach is all about fun, no matter what, or, or I remember you had this example where when Charlie was playing triple a, the one coach was like, just rolled lines, no matter what. And you're sitting there like, well, not no matter what, but this coach, right. But this coach thinks no matter what. So now from the parent perspective, it's like, what are we, how are we figure or, or maybe talk about maybe that dynamic, maybe, maybe tell that you could tell that story maybe, and then talk about kind of how, how you resolve that or how you dealt with that. I I, I don't, I didn't really deal with it. Like, so, so he was playing at a a level where it was just, it was triple A, his first year triple A. And the coach was that no matter what it was next guy up, there was no, power play there was no penalty kill there was no you're working harder than me i deserve to get the last couple of minutes like there was none of it no matter what so yes as a dad like i know I, I might even sound contradictory here but as a as a parent you do get somewhat invested so i would sit there to nobody else i didn't talk to anybody about this but i'm like my wife and i'm like yeah, i won't he's given he, whoever's up is up doesn't matter if I got three penalties in a row and this guy's missed two shifts because my penalties. If I'm up, I'm up. So that's that's where I came up with that term, fair and equal. Like what's fair and what's equal, and and fair at that point would be that guy just took three stupid penalties, let's say, and the other guys have missed shifts. It's not your turn, right? So that's that's the the issue I had with it. Now, did I say anything to him? No. He well, he asked me at the end of the year to do to do stuff and i said dude i just i don't believe anything that but he was asking me not i didn't go complain I said i don't i don't believe in that philosophy whatsoever because you got kids that are busting their ass and it's like no matter what they do they can't get a uh, an extra shift or and you got a guy loafing or his it seems like his give a shit meter is like at one at best and it doesn't matter it's it's the same thing so i just it didn't resolve it so told my kid i said like this is just this is how i resolved it if you want to call it resolving i told my kid and my wife i was like this is how it, life is sometimes and you just have to deal with it and it's now you know what it's like um you know you, it's okay to get angry that you're working your butt off and you're not getting rewarded for it but I, it is what it is mm-hmm. right so, so okay so then that's a good that's like a very clear contrast in in philosophy and like i think objectively if i can use this it shouldn't be roll the lines no matter what when you're at that right. level. And if we if he was the coach again next year, we wouldn't really have had a choice. Yeah. But I wouldn't have liked it. Right. So my other decision would have been, okay, do you want to coach the team, Andy? Because I would have got it like that. And I didn't want to coach my kids. So that's the that would have been the trade off, right? So, so let's I want to take like a more a more difficult example than just as a for parents. So let's say let's take like the power play. Like I'm the coach and this is how I think the power play should be run. Like this is how the breakout, these are the guys that should be on it. This is the breakout that we should use. And this is the setup we should have in zone and your dad. And you're like, well, that's no good because of reason X, Y, Z. So now it's not as, cl- it's like, you think this, he thinks this, who's right. And, and okay, we've been there. Right. So, so I'm, my thought on it is just like, it doesn't make the coach an idiot that, that, his philosophy about the power play is different than yours. But I know that parents can have a spin out about that where it's like, you know, the conversations that happen about that, where it's like, well, if, man, they got one goal in the last 15 tries and it's clearly not working and they need to change it, whatever. So maybe go take a, take yeah. a whack at that. Well, one. So as a, from a parent's yeah. perspective, yeah. Expectations are, well, he, had, so the, here's the thing, just his expectation is not what you th- it doesn't match up with what you think are the best players, which is probably your kid. Right. So like particularly this one year, I, th- I believe it was major Pee Wee, and the coach did have uh, power plays and stuff. And it was certainly not what I would have picked. Um, but they had a thing that this one kid, I'll tell you who it is after who this kid, they, they believe that this kid was going to be a stud hockey player. It was before hitting. 
He was big, er, big er, and they thought he was a grindy guy, and he could put the puck in the net. And was like, if, and when they they actually told me that, I'm like, oh, oh, okay. But they had power plays who they thought they thought that that was their best option. Like, I'm not the coach. I have nothing to say about this. Like, and I, I don't know how to say it any clearer. Like, it is what it is. Like, I can't go and say, hey, coach, why why is it my son? Which I think he was on the power play. Uh, on one of the units I, i'm pretty sure he was um but who am i to go up to him and say like you got the power play wrong my son should be there or this kid should be here it's like none of my business because like as i said about the previous coach if i want to change and do it the way i would like it to be done then i need to go apply for the job period and um again this is like i know maybe i sound like uh uh it's not the message people want to hear or you want to hear or whatever. But again, it was good for my kid because even though you were one of the, I mean, maybe he wasn't the best player at that age, but he was one of them. The coach is not recognizing that. So obviously you're not standing out as much as we would like you to think or like to think you are. So you need to be better. And this is life, son. You, that guy thinks this guy might be better than you. So you're going to have to prove it some other way. Right. So I don't have necessarily a problem with that because he had to learn. And, and here's the, here's the thing, right? I, I do believe, I know this is going to sound arrogant, but this is the truth. I have, I have encountered coaches that have coached my kid and I, and my wife was very clear on, she reads people well. She goes, Oh, Andy, it's a, you, you're here. You're one of his worst. Um, you're, you're his biggest problem sometimes because um, it's almost like, okay, you got your dad, but I got you. And it's, and it was, it was that, you know, it was that sometimes. So, but it's not for me to, to change it, but it was good for him to realize that like, you're a great kid and you're a good hockey player, but guess what? Sometimes it ain't going to be your way. And, uh, I know people don't like to hear that sometimes, but you know what? It's actually good lessons because it could, because the, and then the following year, it was kind of a little bit like that. And I just made, making, it, my, making it sound like my kid was a real problem here, right? <laughs> Which you know he's not. But the next year it was like, it was the same thing. It was like, oh, we're going to put this kid down a bit. He, you know, he's got his dad and whatever. And we talked to him and, and uh, I said, you know, my wife and I talked to him because he was actually getting frustrated. And I said, listen, don't worry about it. You have to change your attitude. Not because it was bad, but you're going to have to not worry so much about everything else. You have to put on your head. You got to change your attitude to, you know what? Screw everybody. I'm going to be a hockey player here. I, I, and I said it in different words, but I am going to go out there every game, every shift, and I'm going to just dominate the way I know I can. And it was like a, a, a switch flipped. So we helped them get through adversity. Because it's coming. Like if you want to play the game to a certain level or at any level, they're going to be the adversity. I don't want to just throw that word out flippantly, but it comes... Over and over and over again. I, I really do believe that when things don't go your way, especially younger, it's a really good chance for parents to teach, okay, how do we get through this? Like solve a problem. It, it's good for life because you can say, okay, life is not fair. Like kids learn that. And it get put, maybe put a chip on their shoulder and all these different things. I think it's actually kind of good. You know what I mean? Well, you answer that exactly how I wanted you to, if I could answer myself. Okay. Um, and the reason, the reason I wanted to use that example where it's, it's not as clear cut, like this coach is clearly wrong. Cause that's easy, right? It's easy. If the coach is clearly wrong, then you can just sit there on your high horse and say, well, you're clearly wrong and whatever. But when it's not, it's a little bit of a, it's a gray area where it's like, he thinks this, you think this, who's right. I like how your answer is like, I'm not the coach. He's the coach. But even you know? there are times where I go, well, dude, like my kid is playing today. Like dude, why, well, you know, I don't say it out loud to anybody, but it's like, I think that sometimes, but then, you know, when other, when other people would say something, I'm like, I don't, here's the deal, right? My kid or your kid has to figure out how to be a hockey player. Your coach might not actually like you, but you have to do something to make him play you. Right. But the bottom line is like, especially at the level he's at now, it's like, if I feel like the coach is making a whole bunch of mistakes, it's not for me to worry about. Truly, truly. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. The bottom line is if he's making a whole bunch of mistakes at that level, he won't have a job. It's not for me to worry about. 
right? So I think if a guy is coaching and trying to keep a job and, and move up the, to the National Hockey League or whatever, be the best OHL coach or whatever, I think the moves he makes, decision he makes, are because he thinks it's the best thing for his team and for his career. And if your kid is not included in that decision, then it might say something more about your kid than it does about the coach. Does yeah, that make sense? Yeah, it's like your kid's expendable to a degree. Hundred percent. Right? So, and I think that's what my point is of bringing that up because it's easy to. Th- I remember the parent conversations. Yeah. It's like, and it was about things as, as what's the term? Binary? No. <laughs> no. What's like if you if I think one thing and you think another thing, but it's not clear who's right. Oh, um, uh, combative. Uh, no. Uh, you know, like it could, like it's it a could dichotomy. Go, yeah, like it could go either way. Yeah. Like it's not clear what the right answer is. Anyways, okay. if, 50 50? Yeah, yeah, 50 50. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not, if, I'm not in your head. Where, where it's, some, it's something that's not that, cl- it's not clear who the right person is. Those situations happen all the time because it's just a coaching decision that they're making in the game or during the play or with their systems or whatever. So when you're in that situation as a parent, which you're going to be, it doesn't like it's not a bad coach now because you guys don't think the same thing about something. Well, you know? the other thing is, is you, you don't know. I've said this before. You don't know what the coach is asking right. either. So uh, you might think that, uh, why didn't he shoot the puck there? He had an open net and it might be a very, very clear statement that let's say it's a power play or maybe it's a dump in or whatever it is. It's that's what, how we're going to execute our four check. So mom and dad could be all pissy that, you know, the guy needs to take it to the net. But if the coach is saying, that's not what I want you to do, but you do it your way, guess who doesn't get to play? So there's the other side of the coin. And that's where a lot of people don't understand is that you, when you think you know the game, and I'm talking higher levels now, but I have even the lower levels. You think you know the game. Like uh, most parents don't have a clue what a system is. Not a clue. They, they could watch a game and they could, you could see a one, three, one, and they wouldn't know there's a one, three, one. I say this all the time, man, when we're watching yeah. games is like, even with my parents, like I played my whole life and my, my parents didn't, my dad played recreational hockey. He didn't never played for a structured team ever. So they, in all the years that they watch, it's like, they don't know what they're watching. It's like, we could run a face off play and they didn't even know what happened. Right. So my, why I'm saying that is I remember my dad, like he didn't understand defensive zone systems. He got the concept if I explained it to him, cause he's not an idiot, but like, if I was in a certain spot and he'd be like, dude, just go get the puck. Like they won't get mad at you if you just get the puck. And I'm like, I can't just go get the puck. That's not where I'm supposed to be. I have to be here because if I try to go get the puck and then I don't get it, then what happens? Right. And these are things that as parents, you don't even see what, what is going on. And maybe it's not that complex when you're at younger levels, but the coach is seeing different things from behind the bench, man. He's, he interacts with the group all the time. And if he has any sort of brain sense, he'll know the strengths and the weaknesses of the team. And he tries to do what he can do to put, obviously, the most charitable case. He's trying to do the best he can to get a team that wins, like you said. Because nobody wants a team to be no good, you know? So that's just another thing to keep in mind why I wanted to use those examples. Because it, it doesn't make the coach an idiot if you guys don't think the same thing. Because maybe you don't understand. Or maybe you do, and they just think something different, and it doesn't. Yeah, it's dude. not up to you. You're not the coach, you know. Dude, I, I've seen why you know. Like, there's a lot of things I I, I would say I, I not what I would do, but I don't coach. I have no no say in this zero, and I don't tell my kid what I think, I, because that doesn't help him either. And that's a, that's another very important thing is please please don't dump on your kid. He's not a garbage can with a hairy lid, right? He, he doesn't need to hear your negative thoughts and, and they, they, they don't. They just don't want to hear it. 